The model by XAI called Grok has been open sourced and uh, this week the tweet by Elon Musk said that this week XAI will open source Grok and roughly an hour ago the Grok weights and model itself were open sourced. Uh, as you can see there is some discussion on huh, whether or not OpenAI should do the same but yeah here is the response by Elon Musk on that so you can read that on your own. So this is the release page of the Grok 1. So here they state that they're releasing the weights and the architecture of the model, not just the weights, of their 314 billion parameter MOE or mixture of experts model called Grok 1. So this release is uh, actually, or this model is actually a mixture of experts model, something like Mixtrao. If you are familiar with that and we are pretty sure that uh, Google has also specified that their Gemini models are actually a mixture of experts probably but again we are not sure about the, G the GPT-4 implementation but it might be the case that there we also have mixture of experts. So here the web page says that this is the model trained from scratch by XAI. So this model is uh, and pre-trained using their own data. So this is a raw based checkpoint from Grok pre-training phase which concluded in October 2023. And this is not a chat model, this is just a pre-trained model. So probably they have another fine tuning uh, further with the chat model that they're using on XAI or other platforms. So here are some of the details that they're describing. Uh, base model, large on trained on large amount of data, not fine tuned on any particular task, so just pre-training such a base model such as a llama base or something like that. Uh, the number of parameters are with. 25% of the weights active on a given token. So uh, this is roughly one fourth or exactly one fourth of the weights are active when a token is passed into this mixture of experts. Not sure how many experts are there in, but um, probably you can find out that within the code. Trained from scratch using custom training stack on top of JAX and Rust in October 2023. I'm pretty sure that the this model was actually uh, rumored or uh, even suggested by the researchers from XAI that the model is actually written in JAX. So uh, it appears that this is actually the case. And uh, if you follow the weights of the model, you see that they are available as a torrent file. Uh, yeah, and here they're specifying a bit more data. You can see that they have two active experts at the time eight experts in total so this is pretty much uh, something or pretty much exactly the same as mixed round model has it and they have uh, roughly uh, 90 or 86 billion active parameters at a time so this also is licensed under apache license apache 2.0 license so uh, you can do pretty much everything you want with that model and uh, the model weights are extremely large, 320 gigabytes. So this model will not be very easy to run offline. This is the official GitHub repository of the Grok model. It's under XAI org Grok. And here you can see that they have a couple of Python files. They have a requirements.txt. Let me open that. Uh, they're working with Haiku, with JAX, with CUDA 1.2 interesting numpy and then they're using sentence piece probably for the tokenizer and as you can see there are uh, using a particular release of the jax library i'm not really sure if this is a recent version i have to check that on my own later probably uh, and here are some files model checkpoint runners run and then you have a tokenizer model uh, probably I'm not really sure if they are providing an open source version of their tokenizer or are they using uh, something that is built on top of sentence piece I'm not really sure about that but here they're specifying that this repository contains Jack's example calls for warding and running Grok 1 open weights model and this is a way to essentially run the model and here they state that due to the word size of the model 
a machine with enough GPU memory is required to test the model with the example code. Uh, you can guess that you need probably more than 50 gigabytes of VRAM in order to run this model. And here they state that the implementation of the mixture of expert layer is not efficient within this repository. So the implementation was chosen to avoid the need for custom kernels to validate the correctness of the model. I'm not really sure that if uh, this is the actual implementation that they use in practice, this remains to be seen, but uh, it should be possible to run this repository with the example code provided. So what I did is to open the model.py file in here, and you can see that this is actually a very large uh, file. And in it, you can see a couple of Jux imports and then some Heiko imports. And you can see that this is pretty much a self-contained file since uh, none of the other files from the project are imported right here. And one of the important bits uh, of the file is that they're using quantized weight 8-bit. So they're probably using quantization right within this model. So this is the first bit that uh, took it with something that is a bit interesting. Uh, of course, they're doing some sort of uh, sharding. And yeah, you can from there you can see that they're using uh, probably a router, which is pretty standard in these uh, mixture of experts layers or models. And here you can see that uh, this is a layer that is using a MOE layer, and they have a variable that is essentially the number of experts that you need to uh, initialize this width. So yeah, this is probably a parameter that they're just passing on. Uh, another important thing is that they have this transformer config. So you can probably guess that this is actually based on transformers architecture, just from looking from the code, uh, some sort of attention mask, etc. They're doing some calculations uh, with linear layers. I mean, like this is just a first pass over the code. Uh, another interesting or important thing probably is that they're using rotary embeddings for the input sequence tensor. And uh, you can, they even have a very nice uh, reference to the archive paper for that. So interesting choice there. Uh, of course, multi head attention, something pretty standard. But you can see that most of the implementation is done by them and i'm not really sure if this implementation is uh, standard or they have uh, some sort of tricks that make this model work even better in some situations so what i did was uh, and uh, yeah finally they have this language model i would say wrapper that is essentially doing the it's essentially an interface on top of or a facade on top of the all of the implementations that they, ha they have here. So I guess that this is pretty elegant. And uh, what I did it was to give the code for the model.py. So since this is pretty much the more interesting part of the repository, and I've asked uh, ChatGPT or GPT4 to create a summary of what are the most important uh, technological points. So they say uh, the ChatGPT says uh, something really important, a sophisticated deep learning framework focused on transformer architectures, optimizations for distributed training and inference. So you would uh, guess that this is the case since, yeah, probably you need uh, some sort of very hardcore hardware in order to train such a large model. Uh, and then the GPT-4 version says that this is a custom implementation of multi-head attention supporting functionalities like caching for autoregressive decoding and sharding. So there are actually using sharding within the mood head attention if GPT-4 is right about that. And then furthermore, the framework introduced a novel approach to handling dense layers within the mixture of experts paradigm, enabling conditional computation paths depending on the input. So this is probably, and this is again, just my, uh, my guess, I'm not really sure as I have an, a really deep dive into data deep dive within the code, but probably this is uh, talking about the router. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. And then the language model configuration encapsulates the overall model architecture. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, pretty much correct about that if I understood that correctly. The language model data class is essentially the wrapper on top of all of the, let's say, details 
of the transformers, etc. This includes embedding the input tokens, processing them through the transformer layers, optional memory for stateful computation, that's interesting, and producing widgets for the next token prediction task. Again, this is uh, pretty standard. Um, I'm not really sure about this optional memory for stateful computation. Uh, that looks really interesting. I might need to dig a bit deeper into that. But essentially, they're training this model for next token prediction task, something that is very, uh, let's say, very standard in here. Probably their dataset is the most important cutting edge that they have. And probably they're using lots of tweets uh, in order to train this model, probably other uh, existing texts. Overall, the code represents a comprehensive framework for training and inference of transformers models with particular emphasis on efficiency, scalability, and modularity for distributed environments. I'm not really sure if ChatGPT talked about quantization, such as quantized weights for memory efficiency. Yeah, yeah. It looks like that uh, it did, did catch that one as well. The last part that we're going to go through is this run.py file within the repository. And here you can find essentially the complete config of the model. So they have a vocabulary size of 128 times 1024. So pretty large vocabulary size compared to other models. Uh, the support of the sequence is roughly 8K tokens. So this is not as large as you might think. I, I was probably guessing that it has like 16K or 30K, uh, 32K of sequence length. But this is not the case, at least in this model, of course. Uh, they have a padding token, a sequence token. Um, yeah. So other than that, they have number of heads 848 for the transformer and 64 layers. And yeah, here is the config for the number of experts. By default, this is the case, eight experts and active experts, one probably for the router or the manager, if you will, and then one that is currently active. So number of experts is equal to two. And then they have the batch size per device. Around, yeah. Uh, so one, yeah, interesting. Yeah, um, I'm not really familiar with training on this Haiku library. So probably this is some sort of configuration for that. Let me know if you uh, know more about Haiku and how the configuration is done right here. So if you catch anything more interesting about this model, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm going to post the links to everything that we've seen in the video below. Thank you.